Hi, I'm Ken. Hi, I'm John. And we're all about, about tools. tools. Well, today we're doing something that is different for us right. and really exciting. Really though. different for us. Yeah. <laughs> well, and we're, we're really different location. to begin with. But yeah, we're on location. We're at High Tech Tools up here in Elberton, Georgia. And uh, when I tell you, when I, when, I, when I tell you that we are out in the woods, the yeah, there you go. <laughs> when we're out in the woods, we're out in the woods. But uh, but we're really excited because we're here today to take a look at the Golesky tools. That's right. And this is the granite capital of the world. That's what I hear. Right. Actually, there are more granite shops around here than I have ever seen in my life anywhere. Right. And I think what it is is there's more monuments that have been shipped out of here across the nation than anywhere else. So you could say these are probably the original monument tool area. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, just a couple things real quickly. Um, we're going to be showing several different tools today, right? which are going to be really fun because it's just a lot of, I mean, this is some really cool tools. Right. And, uh, but we have a special guest with us today who we're really excited to have, and that's Bill oh, Wallen. you are. <laughs> I was he doesn't there. really excite me. But <laughs> well, anyway, despite his appearance, he's actually kind of a nice guy. That's right. And that's Bill Wally with this. Bill, good to see you. Good to see you, John. I'm not right. shaking your hand, okay. thank you. <laughs> but Bill's here with us, and we're really excited that he could be here as part of this uh, this uh, on-site shoot. That's right. And we apologize for the low-budget filming. Why? What's, that any, <laughs> what's ever different? <laughs> Actually, our camera guys will probably kill us if okay, they do. Okay, so uh, very quickly, what are we going to be talking about today? Well, we're going to be, well, well, let's bring Steve up here. We have okay. Steve. All right. Come on up. And Steve is with high tech stuff. How are you doing? And uh, he's kind of... See you, Steve. See you. Yeah. Yeah. Here. Yeah. 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 Tools. Great to see you, Steve. See you, too. Um, some of the tools we're going to be talking about today, I know we're going to be talking about the turbo cut, which is an yeah, incredible saw. Absolutely. I know we have the... Uh, um, the Contra Cat. The Contra Cat. Which is um, popular um, with the Diamond Archive. Fantastic. It's a machine that you can use for several different applications. Okay, and we got the, uh, we got the jigsaw. Yes. And we also have the... Um, the, poly the Polyfox 1600. Excellent, and that's for that's it's a an angle that's grinder. Polish. It's an angle grinder, yes. Okay, okay great. great. Well, then um, I guess we're pretty much ready to get going. And don't forget we'll oh. the uh, the Duvain 1500 here. The Duvain 1500, and that's for making a, a bowl cutout. Exactly. Great. Well, excellent. Well, let's uh, get everything set up, and we'll get going. All right, right. great. Thanks. Excellent. All right. Uh, now, Steve, yes. one of the first things we're going to do is do a sink cutout, but prior to that. This piece of material has already been sawed. Exactly. Yeah. And for that, you would use either a tool we keep carry presently in our catalog is a track star. That's correct. Or another tool that we offer also offer through you here at High Tech is the bridge saw. The bridge saw, exactly. And uh, yeah, that's for the larger shops that would do it on the bridge saw. And, and you want to talk louder. <laughs> and a person that's just uh, starting out would use something like the track star. Is just venturing into this uh, business, uh, it's, like I said, it's the track star. Okay, so now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to show this Duvain 1500 sink cutout tool. Exactly, and that's going to be used for um, oval cutouts, for vanity cutouts. Mm -hmm. um, we do also have a round um, oval, uh, a round uh, uh, template for bar sink cutouts as well. Okay, so I do not have one here to show you, we're uh, out of stock on that right now. But this is the most popular one that we sell. Well, wouldn't you be more out of stock on the most popular one that you sell rather than the one that is well, not we very don't popular? Carry enough of, we don't carry a lot of them. And, uh, <laughs> now, okay. now, now this, right, this right here will give us a cutout for either a Kohler Caxton or an American Standard Oval. That's correct. Because it does those two most common oval sinks, then obviously it would work with just a huge variety of stock that exists in the marketplace. Exactly. So I would recommend, if you want to have this, do a 2210 or a 22.9 uh, standard would be perfect. Okay. All right, so go ahead and show us how we would lay out a, a sink canal. So basically what you would do, you would want to, um, all right, this is a little new to me too, so bear with me. What I'm going to do is... I'm how about if we have your fabricator lay it out? You want to do that? Okay. We actually have a fabricator here. Let's get Bobby in. Let's get you out of the way. 
<laughs> we have a, a stone fabricator here, Bobby Davison, and he's been uh, he's been on the stone side of life for six years. Not stone, but stone <laughs> side of life, as opposed to solid surface. You admit to that pretty readily, so that scared me a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I didn't inhale. <laughs> I'm taking the Clinton approach. Okay, well, don't take too many of the Clinton approaches. Start checking your clothing out here. The um, but anyway, uh, what do we do here next? So basically what I have here, I have a, a 25 inch. Your standard top would be 25 and a half inch. Standard vanity would be 22 and a half inch. But a normal layout on vanity or top would be three inches from the front edge. That allows for your overhang, your cabinet, and the front lip on the bowl. So the first thing you would do is take off your three or three and a half, depending on, that all depends on the template, man. Now is that a China mark you're using? It is. Okay. It is. Yeah, I notice it's a little crooked there. It is. It's making me nervous. Well. Well, that's okay. We're used to mistakes. That's why we keep John on the show. That's right. That's okay. I did one three and I did one three and a half, but you need to be consistent. Well, that's the great thing about an oval cutout, if you're off anyway, it's still one round point. Thank you. Alright, this will be my front lip. Okay. Now, probably most of the tools you use, because everything is wet, is you really probably would use either aluminum or stainless steel. Yeah. But yeah. aluminum would be a little better. Right. If you want them last any amount of time, you need to buy mm -hmm. aluminum. aluminum too. Okay, well, let me mark the square end. I need you to speak up a little bit too. Okay. <clears throat> He's just squaring off this end so we can make sure we get our cut centered on the slab. Your center line. 14 will be the center line. And you need to mark that top and bottom? Uh, you do. The, the template. You'll either catch one line or the other. Okay. You'll probably catch the top. But as long as you have three lines on this template. I see you're marking you your template right through the holes. You have center holes. Okay. And these will actually be easier on the top because you'll have more area. You. Uh, I haven't seen the top in the vanity less than 36 inches, so it'll actually be easier on a, on a real rock. Okay, so now you've marked the center line. We have our setback, we marked the overall length, and then we marked the center line. Okay, so that, that's only, easy so far. Not any different than solid surface. Not any different. The only other thing that you would do is you need a cross section. At least 28, 29 inches long. So you catch the template. Okay. So how do we know where to make that line? Um, We've got three inches back from our three inches edge. back from 25. The top's actually 25 instead of 25 and a half. But you, you would dedu deduct your overhang and split the difference again. Okay, now when you say the overhang, you mean the overhang over the cabinet or just from the cutout? From the from the cutout. Okay. From the actual cutout. So we're going from 22 inches, so that'll be 11, correct? Right. Right. So what we've done is we have 22 inches from the back of the top to the front edge of our cut. The middle of that is 11, and then we'll go ahead and we'll put our mark right across the now, correct? Correct. Steve is going to come back over here now. Thanks, Bobby, for laying it out. Okay, and so now we have... Put the template up. 
Okay, now let's talk about the template here. It's, it's essentially a, a steel ring, exactly. and I've noticed you've got these suction, little cups on the bottom. Suction cups on here. Suction cups. Now, how do these work? By Venturi? Yes. So there's air actually flowing through here, and which uh, which allows you uh, uh, not to have every suction cup on this on the stone, so it can hang off. Okay. So th this we just merely have hooked to our compressor. Exactly. So we're just going to lay this over and center it. Now we're overhanging the way in the back. Is that okay? That's fine. We want to oh, no problem. Here we go. I'm going to get my side back here. I'm dead to center my hole. Still in the center of my hole. All right, we're good. Okay, good. Once this is done, just turn your air on. And, and, so and, even, though we're, and even though we're... Uh, well, well, actually, we're not hanging right over. Here. Right here we are. Okay. But it makes no difference. Really. Doesn't make a difference. That's amazing. Because a lot of Venturi tools I've seen, I notice if you're hanging over, you lose that, uh, you lose that uh, suction. Yes. Very interesting. Okay. Right. And now, this now we hook this one to the uh, template. Now this is the uh, Duvain 1500. Duvain 1500, and the tool on and here, it's just a regular Makita. Just right. so any, right. any, any grinder will work. Well, no, we sell a classification with the uh, Makita. Oh, so when you buy the Duvain 1500, it comes You're with the Makita. Makita exactly. Okay. And you get a blade, which is a, uh, a five-inch uh, contour blade. Okay. So we have the contour blade on here right now. Exactly. So what we're going to do is. We'll hook this onto the template. It has this spring right here, that, uh, and it gives a brass roller wheel that you have to hook onto the template. So, so this right here, by straightening it out, will go in there. That'll ride on it. That'll ride. Yeah, that'll ride it on. And let, now this is also adjustable in and out, so that you can accommodate a large roller bowl if you need to. Right. Uh, can you repeat that again? I'm sorry. This has adjustment to it. We know it's set up for like a Kohler Cash yes. or an American Standard Oval, yes. but you can handle a slightly larger oval bowl because of the adjustment of the tool. Exactly, and I'll demonstrate that right here by just moving it in and out. It plays four inches in and out, so it gives you an eight inch uh, um, radius. Now, is there any sort of a lubricant you use on this? You can, put a, you, you can put a little uh, WD-40 on there to, uh, to loosen it, but it's... A strike-hold product would work well on there, Ken, yeah. because so the water won't affect it, and it actually uh, will give it a good lubrication. Okay, then that's why I need that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then also it has a uh, one back here to uh, fine, adjustment. fine adjustment to bring it up to the line where you're going to cut. So you would, I don't, unfortunately I don't have a template here, a paper template, so I would place the template. You would actually take, an, or even if you mark the template point on the paper template exactly. on the top, you would just get your punch back set, the final, so what you would, with that. Yes, yeah, so say this is your paper template and you've marked it right here. Okay. And then you would bring this up to the line. Okay. And then you do your final adjustment. To bring it right to it. Right to it, exactly. So you use the fine adjustment to lower it. So I'm not quite there. And also this um, drop. So you want to have the blade uh, in, in about that angle. So about perpendicular. Perpendicular. Right there, so that would work perfect right there. Okay. We have, we've added the, the flex tube on here. For the water, yes. for the water feed, so we can make sure we supply plenty of water. Exactly. You've got a bandit on your finger now, so you can get all over the place. Okay. And, uh, what we're going to do is turn the water on. Get now, how much water do you need to have on, and how do you know where it has to be aimed? It has to be aimed, aimed right down where the blade is cutting into the stone, and then the blade pulled. I'll get that flush all over the place. And then this is. Uh, Available speed, and you want to run at a high speed. And what you're going to do is when you hear it, you hit the stone, you're going to pull it out all the way around. And you're going to go left. Left at a 30 degree cutout. What you want to do is you're going to step cut. Oh, 
what we've done is you're taking and you're just maybe dropping a sixteenth into the material on each pass all the way around. So we're just in step, we're taking we're first just kissing the material, creating a score line, dropping again at a sixteenth, making a score line, and we'll keep going until we all the way through. Cut. Yes, exactly. Okay, so we'll finish the cutout and then we'll be right back. Through our pieces dropped out. Uh, oh, is that heavy? Huh? Like uh, cutting board for a young lady. Okay. That's right. I know Bill was saying he wanted to take this back to the bed for his wife. Okay. They go, I'm sure she'd be looking for that. But uh, okay, now that we're through, what happens next? Well, we uh, we can uh, lift this up now. Take this off. Always not that easy. But there you go. You want to lift the front off and then back. Okay, right there. Turn the template off. Sure. Quiet. Silence. Comes off. And this is just, this is all the, uh, this is just the sludge, which you just have a hose and you just, uh, just hose that right off. It doesn't damage the surface in any way? No, well, you just want to be careful and you don't want to be doing that. Okay. <laughs> the, because the granite under my hand <laughs> will, will scratch will the surface. actually scratch this whole surface up and then we'd have to end up polishing that again. Well, yep. And I don't know if you want to do a top polish. Uh, you might have to cut out a whole new piece again and that's just wasting granite. Okay. So you, you do want to be uh, really careful, especially when you're using... Absolutely black. And so, so the point is, is, once you've made the cut, all of this little bit of debris, you, can you just merely want to hose it off, never wipe it, squeegee it, or exactly. rub it at all. Okay. What they normally do, I'm sure, is that they will just. You got it on? There we go. This is one way of doing it. And usually the whole awful expensive hose end. Sorry, don't <laughs> but it washes right off. It washes right off. And the great thing about it, no dust. <laughs>